two gun. Bam. Look at you. Two gun got him a damn GoPro. All right. Y'all ready? Here we go. <laughs> Show. We're going to do the interview with Cuz. That's all right. That is Cuz in front. Look at that big old fat ass dog that got to carry that damn thing. God, I'm back. All right, I'm back. Yeah, we got this damn big truck. Yeah, that's all right. Hit that, hit that right right there. All right. Right there in front of him. Oh, no, it's, it's four lane. Go ahead. It's here. We got the Big Mo Show, little Egypt. All right. Give him an interview. Okay. We just got us a little gas. That's about 10 cent higher here, uh, Two Gun. Yeah, it is. You get a towel from me. You get the Pizza Cola. The average is about $93. Right. Big Mo, uh, I don't know somebody's uh got some wings coming on that microphone for your, for your interview. At least we just shut it down for that. All right, I got you. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I got you. I don't know if that was you or not. So, uh, Big Mo, how long have you been riding motorcycles? Man, I actually been riding probably 30 years off and on, but then I probably got my first bike in probably about 2005. Matter of fact, I'm going to see when I first... I used to practice. I remember that time that Stan had that motorcycle and I done came, he bought it over my granny house. Yeah. And I done took it around the corner. And then one time when you was living down in Pensacola, I took that old bike that you bought from Cody. Yeah, yeah. I took that around the corner, so I played with it a little bit. And uh, man, I decided to go and pull the trigger and get me one in uh, 05. Hey. So the first, uh, so the first bulky bought was that Booster, then, right? Yeah, I had that. Well, I had one. I had a Booster. Remember, I got stolen. Right. And then I went and got that gunmetal gray, that anniversary edition, brand new, was in the gray. Yeah, that gunmetal gray. Yeah, that was nice. Is a got my little got my little questions here. What kind of bikes have you own total? Uh, well, I had I had uh, 2002 high booster, I had 2005 high booster, and then I bought this 2011 Roadblock Ultra, and I'm gonna thank you for that one because I had called you one day and told you I had seen somebody had a a, a, a real nice high booster that was tricked out in Virginia. You said, "Cuz, you're not getting no younger now." <laughs> he said, "I turn around and know somebody that's that's going through some things." got an old Harley Davidson sale. And hey. I would have never thought about getting a Harley Davidson. Hey, two gun, I told him, I said, look here, cuz. I said, hey, we ain't getting no younger, man. I said, and I know how you like to do your thing. I said, you know, that the, the uh them Harleys is the new high booster. As far as hooking them up, you know, splurging and looking good, them Harleys is the new thing right now. He said shit. He got to look at them bad boys. We found a man with that one and jumped clean on it. You hear me? They say, what type of rides do you prefer? What type of riders? What type of rides? You know, little the, the day trips or uh, traveling? Uh, well, um, it's not a lot of, you know, the, the bike scene is, is, is a little bit behind and slow. You know, you don't see a lot of us on Harleys or things like that. And, 
you know, I, I kind of prefer these type of troops when I'm able to get out and go do them. Yeah, that's a big motor you got. It's time to stretch that bad boy out and do something. Right. How far have you rode a bike? Uh, well, I've been to, uh, you know, matter of fact, what's crazy is that all my long troopers have been with you pretty much. Well, yeah, they probably what, Panama City or here? Uh, yeah. You know, been to Myrtle Beach twice. Yep. Uh, we went, went down to uh, Evansville, Indiana. Uh, we went to, you know, a little short trip. We, you and the kids and everybody went to uh, Huntsville. And uh, we went to uh, Panama City. Right. And down to Pensacola and then this trip right here. Yep, that's right. Let's see, uh, do you prefer, well, do you ride two up? Oh, do I what now? Say it again. Do you ride two up? I mean, do you like uh, ride with a passenger? Ah, it, it's cool. I mean, riding with a passenger is pretty cool. But, you know, the crazy thing is that all these trips I've taken, only person that's ever rode with me was my daughter. Right. So, so that is cool. Yeah, I, I ride two up, but I prefer to ride by my dog on sale. Shit, I, he just gets so used to damn doing things, you know what I mean? Right. I know two guns. He like he don't want to be responsible, huh, two guns? You got that right. <laughs> he, don't, he don't want to be responsible for nobody. What's you your favorite I mean? bike? Shoot, man. I, I, I like the, the Harley, but I, I'm, I'm kind of partial. If I had to have another one, it would probably be a gold wing. Okay. You know, Oh, yeah. yeah, I tell people all the time, I don't own a Harley, but I wouldn't mind having one, but I don't want a Harley to travel. Right, right. Even, even though I know people that do travel them and have a lot of success with it, they go to the police right there. I won't, I don't want one to travel. Let's see. Right. I'd like to maybe one day think about striking this bike out right here because they don't make you know, the road, the road glides in a trike. Yeah. We've got a friend named Van Treese in Nashville, and she went up to Ohio and bought her one that was striked out. Oh, somebody had already done it? Yeah, somebody had already done it. She has a real nice trailer as well. Huh. Now, do you like solo trips, group rides, or uh, both? I, I kind of like both, man. You know, I think that we... We're a lot older now, and and all that wild riding, we don't do that. You know, it's just more about taking in the scenery and doing, you know, all this, you know, this out here, man. And I think that people need to realize that it's a lot bigger than Knoxville. You know, Knoxville has a lot of beautiful scenery, yeah. but the stuff out here is way more, you know, prettier than Knoxville is. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see what's the next. Do you prefer back roads or interstates? I like the back roads, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, seeing new scenery, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. And I and I feel like as long as you got a full tank of gas, you ain't never lost. No. Yeah, boy, you sure know what to say. What's your next bike that you're looking to buy? I guess you already said that, but what's, what's the next one you're thinking about? Uh, I'm thinking about, I wouldn't mind getting a, a trike, maybe. The only thing I hate about it is, is it's like it's, it's the street street glide frame, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing something like that, man, next. Okay. Would well, well, you try yours or just buy you one? Uh, I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know, man. I, I still want to keep this one, but uh, I, I think, I'm think i thinking about getting in the next year or so. Yeah. i tell you what, if I ever decide to trike one, I'm going to trike this one out, and i leave my F6B to two-wheel. And uh, uh, of course, I got the 109 too. It's two wheel, but I, if, if I'm gonna trike something, it'll be this full blown gold one. All right. What do you think about a trike back there, too, Gun? And hey, if I get another vehicle, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, now yeah, that damn. Uh, if you get that Hannigan trike kit, you talking about 12 grand? You hear me? Yes, mm. And that's the wide body too. But, hell, if you need it, I mean, if you still want your dadgum uh, 
knees in the breeze. You got to do what you can. Well, one thing, one good thing about the gold wings is y'all already got the reverse on them. Yeah. You know, the hardy the track it out, it's like 15,000. Oh, Lord. Yeah. You want it a little easier? Hello? You wasn't on here? Am I what? I was, I was asking, was you on there? You got anything you want to ask, Big Mo? I had to translate it to him. Oh, uh, no, I ain't got no questions. Yeah. I was trying to de-stress from talking to my stepdad. That's <laughs> why I saw Sal. Yeah, you need, to put, you need to block anybody that stress you out. This, this, we in a stress view zone. Look at that, look at that sky. Yeah, yeah that's why I was like putting the music on, enjoying the ride, just to get that out of my brain. Well, even though this ain't the uh, the kids bothering you, but you know what our motto is, don't you, Big Mo? <laughs> Man, fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll you know, you know. ain't say about it, you know, because all, all our kids are at the age where they really don't even fool with us too much, man. Right. <laughs> so it's time for us. We, we put them first in everything that we've done. And now they don't even they don't even look at us unless they need something. Uh huh. So now it's time for us to go ahead and start doing ourselves. Right. Yeah, my daughter last night had the nerve to say, "I don't want you to go." But, I said, you know, "If I, they, I they said, if I stay home, you won't even talk and, to me." You know, all of us we have real good kids. Hold on, big mo. Oh, go ahead. Say it again, Steph. Huh? Say it again, big mo. Walked on you. Oh, I said. uh, Lane don't wanted me to stay home, and I said, if I stayed home, you wouldn't even talk to me all weekend. Oh, she messed that mom up. <laughs> don't feel bad. Oh, I yeah. don't. I my said, kids, fuck them kids. <laughs> my kids don't even know my address. Say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, hey, that's, that's about the size of it, though. Shoot. Now, uh, 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 you want to tell your story about your heart deal? How you feeling now that you uh, had a heart? Uh, two gun or big mold had a whole heart transplant. You hear me? I hear you. I seen it. I, I, I was following man up there when I uh, was up in the Nashville. Go ahead, big mold. All uh, right, yeah. Uh, man, in, in 2011, I got diagnosed uh, with enlarged heart. And uh, at that time, uh, my wife found out she had uh, stage four uh, liver cancer. So we became each other's caregivers. And uh, unfortunately, she passed away in 2012. And uh, I found out that I needed to have uh, a heart transplant. But before I could do my heart transplant surgery, I had to have this uh, surgery that was uh, called an LVAD. And uh, it helped me uh, help my heart get a little bit more stronger than what it needed to be so I could, you know, uh, get the heart transplant, but uh, I wound up getting that heart transplant on October 28th of 17, and uh, man, I haven't looked back since. Man, I, I've been great. Uh, I've turned around and you know been doing uh, pretty much what I want to do. Uh, just got through graduating school, and so man, it's just, it's just been a blessing, man. It's just been a blessing, and you know I've got like some real great people, you know, in my corner. And shoot, man, you hey. And if I don't know nothing, man, I know the God is real. Oh. You know, every, so everything I done been through, man, shoot, without him, it wouldn't have been nothing, man. I got great kids. I got great family members. And, you know, everybody that, that was supposed to be there and got to see that blessing, man, they was there. Right. Yeah, you're doing right. Yeah, make it right. Yeah, you, uh, I have never known anyone to get a heart transplant. So I was like, man, wow. And, uh. You said you actually got to meet the guy or the family of the guy uh, that donated the heart, right? Yeah, uh, you know, they actually let you, they make you wait like up to a year to turn around and get to meet your daughter family. But their case was a little bit more uh, special because the guy whose heart I got, his mother was going through, uh, she had stage four brain cancer. Uh -huh. so, so they wrote me a letter and uh, I got it two months after I got my heart. And then I wrote them back, and uh, you know, when you when you write a letter like that, you kind of leave clues in there because you can't actually say who you are. Mm. So I left clues, and he left clues, and the dad reached out on to me uh, on on Facebook, 
And uh, the first thing he said was, is, uh, I, I know you probably didn't want to hear from me. And, and I texted him back. I said, I've been waiting to hear from you. Huh. And, and so uh, I got to FaceTime the mother, and she actually, unfortunately, passed away uh, Mother's Day of 2018. Huh. So I got to go down there and meet everybody. And so now... Come over here, big dog. Make us live. Have, Make us live. Yeah, we have a, a great relationship. And uh, I got two new sisters and a brother now. All right. And, and so I'm, I'm officially... I'm mixed, officially. <laughs> <laughs> you only look like it so, all these man, years. <laughs> and, and, and I, I talked to the dad, and what's crazy about it is, is that, you know, I lost my son when he was seven months old, mm -hmm. and he lost his son, and then his wife had passed away. Her name was Kim. Huh. Oh, wow. And my wife's name was Kim. So I think to God, he turned around and lined stuff up, man, for people. Yeah. You know, because uh -huh. what's for you is for you. Right. Well, that's all, man. That's, that's, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. And uh, what was crazy about that airbag, a uh, two gun, I mean, he literally, I don't know what they took out, but they put a daggone machine on him that did the pumping. I mean, he had a machine that pumped his heart. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, uh, what the airbag does, it uh, it pumps the heart through, pumps the blood through your heart like how it's supposed to be. So, uh, Man. uh -huh. come on. I saw the law. I was stopping. I hate that. Yeah, make it we'll, right. We'll right. catch up. I just cruise on. We'll catch up. Yeah, we're going to break contact with them heads. We don't want to go through that no more. <laughs> I know they'd have probably came if the old oh. Barney Fife wasn't. Oh, oh, Johnny Law. All right, y'all. Yeah, Pull but, out. uh. Y'all go ahead. I'll get in behind y'all. Go ahead, girl. I'm, I'm going to get in behind y'all. Y'all keep on. Yeah, well, stay in, that, stay in that left lane. You got it, Big Mo. Y'all get in behind Big Mo. What y'all want me to do? Get in behind Big Mo. Okay. Yeah, but the crazy thing about having having the airbag was is it, it, it pumped blood like I should through my have a pulse. So when I would go to the doctor, they couldn't use, a, you know, the rather, a regular br uh, blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. They had to put a Doppler. Like, that's what they kind of use on women when they want to listen to the baby's heartbeat. Huh. It's like, oh, okay. And so they would do that. And, man, it was crazy because with the airbag, I couldn't even, I couldn't get wet. So, I mean, like, I couldn't take a shower. So I had to wash up in front of the sink for the first, hold up. Look at that. Yeah, but I had to wash up in front of the sink for like the first 13 months, man. So that first time I got to take a shower, I took a long hot shower. And you you know, the thing about it too is, is that we take the smallest things for granted. You know, imagine somebody could take two showers a day. I got to take a shower every four days. Or having to wash in front of the sink the first 13 months, man. So that's why I don't take nothing for granted. Man, you daggone was taking whore baths for 13 months. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. That's what Granny called a whore's bath. <laughs> I, I had to, hey, hey, cuz, I had to wash my little peanuts in the sink, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the women's world, we call that a whore's bath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You officially or <laughs> <laughs> Oh me. Yeah, that's that's why but how much weight did you have to lose to, to even be considered and you gotta be healthy two gun to even be considered to get a heart. So you damn near got to be healthy. Uh, man, I had to go to a weight loss clinic uh and had to spend a bunch of money, man, to get my body mass index down. So man, I, I lost like uh I was probably at 3 310 and I got down to 285 and I kept that 285 off uh, for about a year and that's how I was able to get on the list man but you know something uh, that what people need to think about too man is is I never thought about being an organ donor you know and I think that that's one of the, the best gifts that you can turn around and take and give somebody so why be selfish and take that with you when you leave here you know, a lot of people don't know that 
one person, if they harvest your organs, can save up to nine lives. Yeah. Nine lives. Oh. So, and, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's just not about getting a heart transplant. You know, you got to turn around your blood type. A lot of people don't even know their blood types. Right. You know, a lot of people, you know, uh, what I, I, you know, I learned a whole lot going through that whole process, man. Yeah. You know, I probably since 2011, I probably had over 30 surgeries, man. Dang. Man. Because, you know, you have to go get those heart casts when they go, go through your neck mm. and they go down in your heart, check the pressure of your heart, and also they get samples of your heart. And, and so, you know, I consider myself a tough guy. You know, but that stuff, man, broke me all the way down, man. You daggone right, you tough. You talking about, I remember when you told me they had to go down through your neck and leave it in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing about those heart casts is a surgery, but you're not wide awake. Mm. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I believe I'd be on the corner find the dope, man. They might have thought I was awake, but I could have took something before they daggone hit me with it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you gotta be tough, man. Then, you know. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of Slappy Adventures. Please like, share, and comment. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. <laughs> hey, stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.